Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908 what is primacy in speech? The primacy of speech. Speech is the primary way in which linguistic information is communicated between people. There are only two ways of linguistic communication that are natural, biological, independent of culture, speech and sign, among the congenitally deaf and in some hunter-gatherer societies. We'll talk about speech supremacy, priority of speech, significance of speech, etc. We'll talk about that. The spoken word is preferable to the written word. Mostly. We hold the opinion that when speaking a language, we are not particularly concerned with the correct word usage or accuracy. All languages grammar and written form are its norms, but in this case, We'll talk about how spoken language comes before or is more prevalent than written language. Let's begin by pointing out that there are numerous languages spoken throughout the world. That can only be accessed verbally. There is no written literature available. Although many of the languages that are spoken around the world lack written literature, we feel that the majority of the books we read and discuss, as well as numerous linguists, confirm that written language is the standard language. What about the languages, then? There are several languages that lack any written literature yet being spoken. Despite the fact that they are speaking rather than writing, they have grammar, a vocabulary, and a sentence structure. They are speaking to one another. The issue now is, what about that? What would be an illustration of language like that? which is not available in written form. There are several, but we'll use one as an illustration. You've probably viewed a variety of movies showing tribes using forests, including some where the tribal members were still humans. The animal is killed. And eat them before using them. Even clothing is lacking for them. They make use of tree leaves. Hence, you can watch a lot of these videos on National Geographic Special and other networks. Thus, such languages are spoken by people who live in forests. Whether kind of language they speak, they have no access to learning resources and no connection to the modern world. They don't have any literature in their language or in any other way because they are still in the same stone age that humanity lived in thousands of years ago. It is not necessarily true that every language must be in written form before it will be standardized because people have been speaking and using their language in spoken form for thousands of years. The spoken form is actually the one that gives rise to the written form. Even without a written form, the language will continue to exist until the last speaker is still alive in the globe. What happens when a language is written down is that it is permanently maintained. And when speakers of that particular language pass away, the language is said to be extinct because it cannot be written and exists only in oral form. With the final speaker, the language likewise passes away. Writing is a recent development. Definitely. Writing is a recent development. The first to speak languages were humans. Then, when humans developed, they learned how to write. Since humans first developed the ability to write thousands of years ago, language has been recorded in many ways in written form. Otherwise, only spoken variations of each language were available. In plain English, you may state that the languages were only spoken in the beginning and not originally, therefore with time it came to be. Let's take 10,000 years ago as an example. For instance, we can claim that there was no written language 10,000 years ago. Nonetheless, 
diverse communities around the world spoke various languages. As a result, after 1002, 3000 years, humanity will have the ability to grasp why languages should be written down. So they began to write in the language that they were speaking. So, where the sentence structure and grammatical norms of that written language originated, they did so from the spoken language. They were genuinely seized by humans, they were neither created nor produced by them on their own. Spoken form, which means that initially, in the beginning, during the beginning of language, humans started utilizing it. The verbal form. It is believed that people first began to communicate with one another through sign language, sounds, and words some 20,000 years ago. The first language spoken by mankind was written. Only that there is nothing comparable is believed. I'm referring to the fact that we have access to a book that was written 20,000 years ago but that we have never read. Thus it is thought. Writing also depends on spoken form, as I've already mentioned. After, oh, many, many years, I started writing. This dialogue took place 20,000 years ago. Although though we think that when speaking a language, we do not care about the sentence structure, grammatical structure, or the usage of the proper term, the rules of written language are nevertheless drawn from spoken language. When we employ language in writing, it tends to be more standardized, purified, or possess more exact grammar rules or terminology because when I write anything down, I have the option of going back and changing it. Or, if I want to edit my writing, I can go back and change a page I wrote 100 times. I can alter it. I can incorporate several rules with it. Why? But once we start talking, whatever is said is gone, so we don't have time to fix the sentence structure or anything else. As a result, the laws of the written form of language originate from spoken language. As a result, the laws of the written language that we study are derived from the spoken language. Whatever the problems or issues are, they are handled verbally when they are presented in writing. For instance, if the author of a novel or drama uses a word erroneously or uses a grammatical structure or Urdu grammatical structure that is incorrectly written. Pertaining to Urdu poetry. How will it be fixed then? Who will say that to us? Which is it? What is the correct phrase? Again, the writer must consult native speakers of that language to determine what the correct sentence is. The rule will be applied to the words and sentences for individuals whose first language is Urdu, so they will understand what kind of correct structure is being used by the speaking community. Hence, nothing can be created in any written form other than by writers. However, the authors and everyone else involved must examine the spoken form if any precision is needed. A prior stage of the language we previously examined is typically characterized by written usage. It is a writing. Not the primary or the most important form of language, as speech is the most important. Hence, a language's written form is its second form, its first form is its spoken form. And then, in. As I mentioned earlier, the idea that written language is the norm dates back to the 20th century. Prior to it, it was thought that written language was significant. Yet, Linguists in the 20th century valued spoken language to writing. They think that when I say the 20th century, I'm referring to many historians and linguists who have discussed it in their writings. Relating to the history of language, its preservation, its writing system, and its general use. Spoken. In the 20th century, it was therefore thought that spoken language was more essential, earlier, and superior to written language. Formerly, it was thought that written form was the norm, but now a lot of people think that spoken form is the norm. Better than written form. And maybe most significantly, when a child learns the language from. When a child begins learning a language at home, it is when the primacy or supremacy of spoken language is most clearly demonstrated. Instead of learning language in writing, children learn it orally. The parents I'm referring to are those of a new infant. 
A sentence that needs to be used every day to speak to a two-year-old baby is not given by the parents. Instead, the mother teaches the child this sentence. That the topic is this. This is the verb, object, sentence structure, passive, active, and wise parts. Nothing has been taught or recorded in writing. The child has to learn the language in spoken form. Hence, the language that is introduced to us from the beginning, from childhood, is what I mean. The spoken version. Hence, we may say that this covers you as well. This video addresses two queries. The first is speech preeminence, and the second is speech versus writing, which determines which form of language is superior to the other. Written language has its own characteristics. If we claim that spoken language is preferable to written language, the inferiority of written language is not implied by this. It indicates that we are talking about how a language's rules are established. Because of the folks who initially created it, this written form came to us. Started speaking when they were little and has continued to do so. No language is written by a youngster. After taking one class in kilogram prep and one class, the child goes to school. The youngsters then begin to read and write a language in which the entire language has been recorded, but first they have. They already know how to talk and communicate in a language, therefore this isn't really an argument for why one type of a language is better than another. But this time, we're talking about which comes first. So, it is what comes first. Oral form. Primacy is the ability of an individual to recall the first information memorized. Think about it, if you try to memorize your speech from beginning to end, you will end up saying the beginning of the speech more often than the middle or the end of your speech. Simply so what is recency in psychology? The recency effect is a cognitive bias in which those items, ideas, or arguments that came last are remembered more clearly than those that came first. What is visualization in Monroe's motivated sequence? Visualization. The next step of Monroe's motivated sequence is the visualization step, in which you ask the audience to visualize a future where the need has been met or the problem solved. Also what is the 30 forward slash 70 rule in public speaking? The 70 forward slash 30 rule of communication says a prospect should do 70% of the talking during a sales conversation and the salesperson should only do 30% of the talking. What does topical mean in speech? A topical pattern is the most common way to structure speeches, particularly speeches of information, because it is relevant to nearly any topic or type of speech. A topical structure involves dividing your central idea into topic categories or subtopics that surround the main topic. What is recency effect in communication? 1. Cognitive psychology, the tendency in free recall for individuals to be better able to recall the last items in a series or the tendency to remember better information that was more recently learned. Applying this to persuasive communication would favor climax order. How long is auditory memory? When you hear a sound, the audio information enters your echoic memory. It lasts for 2 to 4 seconds before your brain can process the sound. While echoic memory is very short, it helps keep information in your brain even after the sound has ended. What three things do we unconsciously automatically process? Some examples of automatic processes include motor skills, implicit biases, procedural tasks, and priming. The tasks that are listed can be done without the need for conscious attention. What is pointing in a persuasive speech? Pointing, show its importance to the individuals in the audience. Satisfaction step presents a solution. Statement of solution, a brief statement of the attitude, belief, or action you wish the audience to adopt. Explanation. Make sure that your proposal is understood. What is the role of a speaker in an informative speech? As a speaker you are teaching or informing the audience about your topic. Being clear and concise allows the audience to follow along with the information you are presenting. When speaking before a hostile audience you should. 
one before your presentation even begins, introduce yourself to as many audience members as possible. Instead of hiding and reviewing your notes, greet the people, introduce yourself with a smile, and extend a handshake as you ask for their name. What is the number one rule of public speaking? Rule number one, no matter how inadequate your speaking skills, don't tell your audience. What is the golden rule of public speaking? The three rules are know your audience, know your material, and know your passion. What is the rule related to the number of bullets you should have on a PowerPoint slide? Today I want to discuss the 1-6-6 rule. Quite simply, this rule says that each PowerPoint slide should have one main idea, a maximum of 6 bullet points, and a maximum of 6 words per bullet point. What is a MMS speech? Monroe. Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Monroe's Motivated Sequence, MMS, is an organizational pattern used to develop a sense of want or need in the audience, satisfy that want or need, and to help the audience get enthused about the advantages of that solution. What is spatial speech? Spatial patterns organize the speech according to how the topic actually exists in space. For instance, if a speech was on the topic of the Empire State Building a speaker would talk about the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor, etc. Which element of the introduction should be the first thing you say to the audience? The first thing a speaker should do in his or her introduction is state the thesis of the speech. The general purpose of a speech is usually to inform, to persuade or to entertain. Who coined the term recency effect? The term was coined by Hermann Ebbinghaus through studies he performed on himself, and refers to the finding that recall accuracy varies as a function of an item's position within a study list. What is the difference between primacy effect and recency effect? The primacy effect involves rehearsing items until they enter long-term memory. The recency effect involves the brain's ability to hold up to seven items in short-term memory. What is recency effect in performance appraisal? Recency effect is the rater's tendency to allow more recent incidents, either effective or ineffective, of employee behavior to have too much bearing on evaluation of performance. Thus, the employee's most recent behavior becomes the primary focus of the review. Why do we forget? The inability to retrieve a memory is one of the most common causes of forgetting. So why are we often unable to retrieve information from memory? According to this theory, a memory trace is created every time a new theory is formed. Decay theory suggests that over time, these memory traces begin to fade and disappear. Do eidetic memories exist? When the concepts are distinguished, Eidetic memory is reported to occur in a small number of children and generally not found in adults, while true photographic memory has never been demonstrated to exist. The word eidetic comes from the Greek word, pronounced, dos, eidos, visible form. What is it called when you remember everything you hear? Autobiographical memory and SAM. The type of memory associated with SAM may be called autobiographical memory or eidetic memory. People with this type of memory recall events, images, dates, even conversations, in minute detail. People with SAM can often remember things that happened when they were small children. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908 three two nine one three six four six four one four nine zero eight three.